I'm Melissa. I'm a student nurse practitioner and I'm going to be doing an assessment on the neck and lymph nodes. And this is Curtis, my patient. Uh, we are going to start by having you turn your neck side to side. Very good. And then lift up your shoulders. And this is checking cranial nerve 11. Now we're going to inspect the trachea. So tilt your head just a tad and the clavicle. And the trachea is midline and the sides is good. And we're going to, I'm going to put my hands around your neck and we're going to do a posterior thyroid um, palpation here. Tilt your head down a little bit. And go ahead and swallow for me. And one more time. Very good. And the sides and um, of the Thyroid is good and it is midline. Um, now we're going to add palpate or uh, lymph nodes. We're going to start by doing the occipital and then the postericular and the preauricular, the pontular, submandible, and submental. And I'm looking for our size, firmness, and the mobility. And then we're going to do the post cervical, and then we're going to do the anterior cervical, and then the supraventricular, and then we're going to do the intraclavicular. And he wouldn't have a shirt on at this point. All right, and all looks good. Thanks. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm a nurse practitioner student and I'm going to be doing your abdominal assessment on Amelia. She was my only volunteer besides the dog. I think the dog just wanted a belly rub. All right, so we're going to start by pulling down uh, the sheet and keeping um, her dignity and um, privacy as best we can and then lifting up the shirt to the xiphoid process. And I'll first inspect um, the abdomen. So she's got a round contour. She's symmetrical, uh, midline umbilicus, um, and no real apparent uh, veins or arteries. All right, and then after inspection, oh, and I'll look at hair distribution as well, and she doesn't have any. Um, I will auscultate, and I will auscultate all four quadrants of the bowels. I'm trying to hear the bowel sound. And there should be between 5 and 34 per minute, and I'll do that bilaterally. Then I will auscultate her aorta, which should be between the umbilicus and her uh, xiphoid process, and a little bit to the left. And I have to push a little bit harder so that I can hear for brutes instead of just the aorta. I'm looking for whooshing noises. Then I'll check her renal artery, which is both next to the aorta. And I'll do that bilaterally. And again, I'll push hard and a little bit harder and listen for whooshing noises. And I didn't hear any, so that's good. Then I'll move on to percussion, and I'll start by percussing the all four quadrants of the bowel, and I'll place my hand with fingers spread apart and percuss each quadrant, and I'll do that bilaterally, and I'm trying to hear for that drum-like noise, um, which was good. Then I will percuss for the liver. And I'll start in the fifth intercostal space. Midclavicular line. And I will percuss until it sounds dull. And then once I find the top margin, I'll mark that. And then I'll start at the umbilicus and work my way up. And I'll 
mark that and measure that. For an adult, it should be between 6 and 12 centimeters. Um, and then I will attempt to protest the spleen. Now the spleen you shouldn't be able to protest and you would need a little bit of um, cooperation with your patient. So she'll have to take in a deep breath, a big deep breath, and as she does so, I protest the entire time looking for a change from a drum-like to dull. Um, and then the last thing you'd percuss is these. Got your little tummy time here too. So again, because she's a baby and doesn't cooperate um, and give me feedback, you'd find the 12th rib And you would put your hand and you would hit your hand and ask if there's any tenderness and you do that bilaterally. And that's for the costal vertebral um, angle to see if there's any tenderness. And that could indicate an infection with the kidney. Okay, very good. Then we will move on to palpation. And I will palpate um, her liver. So you start at the intercostal margin here and you would palpate. Um, you'd also palpate the bowels using light touch. And if she tolerates that, you can go to deeper palpation. Also, to palpate the spleen, you start from the umbilicus and you would go to the left upper quadrant trying to feel for the spleen and you can feel it. And you'd be using circular motions as you would be feeling for it. So like liver, bowel, spleen. All right, just three uh, tests to do. Uh, we'll do the peritoneum test for the right lower quadrant rebound tenderness. So I push down and I let go real fast and see if she has any pain when I let go real fast or if just pain with um, the pressure. It's positive if there's more pain letting go. Then I'll do the iliposis sign, which is to check the appendix. Um, I'll have her push against my hand that I have on her right knee, and she'll bring it up to 90 degree angle. Um, and if there's any pain with that, uh, that means the appendix is in a retroceal position. Then the last sign is the Murphy sign, and this will be just below the intercostal margin in the midline there uh, on this right side. As she exhales, I will push down and then have her take a deep breath in, keeping the pressure. And if her breath is halted or there's pain, then it's a positive Murphy sign and it's uh, indicative of cholecystitis. And that should be 